Today, I bring you special guest, Stephen Curtis. Stephen Curtis has worked with the Nevada Emergency, uh, excuse me, the Nevada Nuclear Emergency Surge Teams. His background is in uh, health physics, the, the radiation effects of health on people. So he's got quite a background in these areas. What we're going to be talking about today is recycling the, the nuclear fuel, the spent nuclear fuel from nuclear power plants. You know, I've often pointed that out as being a risk uh, factor should the grid go down for how to deal with that. One of the best things we can do is process it, get rid of it, instead of having it sitting out there at all these plants forever. Not only that, it's a huge economic resource. And it uh, could extend the ability and availability of power to the United States for quite a long distance in time. So uh, this is going to be an interesting talk because it's a path forward. It's a fix. A lot of channels just focus on the problems. I like to focus on fixes, and here is a fix. So, Stephen, tell us how long uh, you think this uh, all this spent nuclear fuel that we have at all these reactors would last America to provide us clean energy. Okay, thanks, Greg. Of course, uh, the, the bottom line is there's uh, 90,000 metric tons sitting around that people are worried about. The bottom line is that if you completely fissioned all that, it's worth about 30 times the energy is just sitting there uh, above and beyond the energy we used while it was in the reactor. And if you do all the math, you get about 250 years of uh, energy or electricity for all the United States consumption right now. And that 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 adds up that uh, we Americans at 10 cents a kilowatt hour. And I'd like to see somebody that's still getting electricity at 10 cents a kilowatt hour. We spend four hundred billion dollars a year. So if you do the math, uh, 250 years, it adds up to about uh, about 10 billion, 10 trillion dollars of assets that we have sitting right on our paths, domestic fuel, 100 percent clean that uh, we're uh, thinking about throwing away. And at about 1.7 uh, cents a kilowatt hour, that's about twice its weight in gold. So before we throw it away, we ought to at least think about it. Well, right now we're not doing anything with it. We're not throwing it away. We're just setting it, let it set in these spent fuel rod poles, which pose a hazard. If we could process that, recycle it, you diminish that hazard. You could also control that hazard by putting in small modular nuclear reactors for a backup power source to these nuclear power plants, such that uh, you won't have to worry about keeping uh, diesel fuel supplied, which would be extremely, almost impossible to do over the long term if the grid fails. But you could have a not only a backup power source, but it could be an auxiliary uh, power source that augments what the plants are putting out already and with all the extra uh, strain we're putting on the grid as our country grows and, and as they're trying to electrify everything under the sun, which is a whole nother debatable question, but still we're going to need more power on our grid. There's no doubt about that. So that would help too. Absolutely. The nice thing about all this, Greg, is there are actually private industry companies that are privately capitalized that could do all this for us, that are our existing companies right now with designs ready to go. And it's just a shame that we won't let these go, people go and pee down the open market. Uh, it's, it's um, to me, it's a, ma it's a manifestation of uh, government overreach. And if they would just get out of the business, get out of the government overreach, get out of business altogether, these companies could start producing these reactors and we could really move a long way towards our clean energy goals. And the uh, small modular reactors, uh, you know, the ones we have now are, called light water reactors, and they're about uh, a gigawatt of energy, which is enough for about a million homes. Uh, probably in the United States, maybe closer to 800,000, but rule of thumb is a million. And so if we get these smaller ones and they go all the way down to one, one, one megawatt, you can build one, five megawatts, you can build one. So you can get a neighborhood with its own electric power source. And as we have discussed before, uh, the real danger of one of the dangers of the grid is the electromagnetic pulse. And we talked about the long wavelength that really amplifies on the long lines. And so if you start taking, taking a look at microgrids uh, powered by a small modular reactor, you have a much shorter run to get to everybody's house. And so that reduces that danger somewhat too. Small modular reactors are built underground. So that gives you some kind of a, 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 of a shielding uh, feeling for it. And they're um, 
actually way safer than the, the light water reactors we have now. And so I'm really miffed at why people don't like them. But when we consider the uh, recycling aspect of uh, the spent fuel we have on every nuclear power reactor site right now, uh, we, we really have an unlimited supply of energy at a very low, uh, a very low price, because if you wanna dispose of it and you maybe have a hundred years before we have new inventions in energy, we talked about that a little bit. There's uh, smart people that are yet to be born that are gonna figure some stuff out to where we're gonna have better access to energy, some things we can't even imagine now, um, but maybe a hundred years we'll need this. So we're gonna have to burn electricity at two and a half times the rate we're doing it now. So basically we're gonna to have to encourage people to use more electricity for a cheaper price. Now, I don't know about you, but that, uh, that appeals to a lot of people I know. Take a waste that we have to pay maybe $400 billion to get rid of and then turn it into $10 trillion. That's $10 trillion at one cent a kilowatt hour into power that's almost that's essentially too cheap to meter that we could pay like we do long distance phone calling. I mean, I know 40 years ago, I never would have believed that I could buy a one price a month for all the long distance phone calling I could do, but now I can. That's not out of the realm of possibility at all using these reactors and this used nuclear fuel, but you know, there's a lot of rich people that are already invested their money in wind and solar and they, they uh, have uh, control all the subsidies that wind and solar is getting. And, and so it's going to be a hump to get over, but you, you got to ask yourself, Craig, are you, are you in favor of the people having what they want or are you in favor of having all the government rich people having what they want? And I'm in favor of the people. And I want to see this get going. Well, that's good. So to recapitulate what you pointed out here, make it clear, what we're talking about is we're talking about taking a, currently what's deemed a waste product that's hazardous, spending money to dispose it theoretically one day, which we've not come up with a saleable, politically viable plan to do that. But if we do bury it, it's going to cost a lot of money. If we, uh, uh, if we leave it where it's at, it poses a risk or a hazard. But if you uh, recycle this fuel, it becomes a gold mine. It's better than a gold mine because you don't have to go looking for it. You know where it's at. There's lots of it there. And it's worth a fortune as an energy resource if it's properly handled and processed. The, uh, so we're talking $10 trillion in value. And that's probably undervalued because you're talking about that at a one cent a kilowatt hour, which everybody would love to have electricity at one cent a kilowatt hour again and, and, and cut your power bills dramatically. Uh, but also, uh, we're talking, you know, it would open up desalination possibilities and all kind of possibilities for water and other stuff if our power was cheaper. But the idea that it might last us 250 years, and there's still uranium in the ground that can be extracted, it's just that it'd be extracted and slower. But we have a lot of vested interest uh, with the momentum of the industry that exists that doesn't want to change because the uranium miners don't want to be put out of business. The fuel processors, as well, they could switch. But you've got, uh, as you mentioned, the solar crowd. But, you know, we're buying solar rays from China where they're uh, using slave labor and coal-fired power plants to produce them. And so the uh, uh, so-called carbon footprint looks highly questionable. But I'm seeing now reports that they're putting all of these in the desert in Arizona, uh, uh, excuse me, California, and places where it's uh, uh, they, they've had these Joshua trees and other old, old, long-term growth, small, what looks like bushes, but a lot of people don't realize there's a huge root network that's 10,000 years old. It's actually alive. Most of the life in the desert's underground in that root network and they'll die and release so much carbon into the atmosphere from their death that you're not only destroying a, a, a long-term ecosystem, but you're releasing more carbon than you're saving. They actually are carbon negative, those solar rays in the desert are carbon negative. It's a farce. So for 25 years of, of a life of a solar panel, which you're lucky if you get that, you are destroying a, a lot of the biomass in the ground. You're, you're getting rid of a 10,000 year ecosystem and uh, releasing more, the whole putting solar rays in the desert just sounds nuts. Uh, and the current windmills are uh, highly dubious too with what they do to bird strikes. I got some connections into an alternate windmill concept that it'll improve that dramatically. But still this whole notion that you can reprocess this fuel 
is very attractive to me because it's a risk. It's a hazard right now. We could turn a hazard into an economic resource. But as you said, uh, there's some things that have to get out of the way. What, what's your take on that? Oh, I agree with you 100%. Uh, I'll put a little bit of my philosophy in here, which is that if we have competition, and this has been proven out many times in the United States, we get a lot better consumer products out of it, and we get a lot cheaper prices for our people. And right now, uh, your electricity is being sold to you by monopolies, which I'd like to clear that up. And um, the idea of having a microgrid, uh, it's like having your own power source in your own town. And in fact, uh, some of these uh, companies like Dow Chemical are considering putting a, a small mod reactor right for one factory. So you have a factory produce process heat and electricity for the factory. You don't have to burn high heat from coal or anything to extract and manufacture the ammonia and other chemicals that we really need. So they're actually looking at that now. And, and the sad part is that there's only one reactor that's been approved. That's a small mod reactor. It's been approved to design. Now, if they want to build it, they're going to have to get the, the actual construction permit to build each one. I mean, if we had to do cars this way, we'd have cars that went five miles an hour and weighed 30,000 pounds of armor on them to try to protect us. Yeah, I love the no reason for us to take, <laughs> yeah, there's no reason to take that kind of safety when we're talking about the future of America. And if you want to have power at, at, at uh, even 10 cents a kilowatt hour, I don't know anybody who can get power at that level again. But if you read, if you, and I like to say recycle, instead of reprocess, because reprocess gives us an idea of a chemical reprocessing like France does, which is very, very good process, but that fuel goes back in the same reactors we have today, the light, uh, light water reactors. If you can recycle it, you basically dissolve it in chlorine and you can mix it in with a molten salt, just as right, mix it right in with the molten salt. And then of course, uh, there's no core to melt down Molten salt reactors work at atmospheric pressure, so there's no high high pressure water lines like we have with light water re reactors. So mechanically, it's it's way cheaper. There's also a method where you can put it into metal fuel, which uh, Argonne National Laboratory ran a reactor like this for 30 years in Idaho, and it worked perfectly. But back in the days when they had to make decisions about money, they uh, they decided to shut those programs down because they were fighting the Vietnam War. And so those things got put on hold, but we 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 still have the concept and the ability to do that. And since then, despite the fact that reactors, nuclear reactors, are very difficult to license, and they take a long time and cost a lot of money. New Scale I mentioned uh, got theirs licensed, but it took them half a billion dollars. It cost them five hundred million dollars that they had to pay the NRC and others. Well, to pay to prepare the paperwork, but they also have to pay the NRC three hundred bucks an hour to process the paperwork, and it took them 10 years. So that's a lot of investor patience for a private company, but the investors see the value in it. And this is a light water reactor. It's not a fast reactor like I'm talking about. We're talking about Bill Gates now. The government gave him $2 billion to develop his. And he says now he's got to be delayed because he needs a special kind of fuel that they don't make now. Well, our used nuclear fuel is sitting on the sites ready to go. We just got to uh, dissolve it, turn it into chlorine, and 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 run it through the system. And uh, there's there's very little reason that I can see why we can't do this. I've never had anybody tell me why we can't outside of a political realm. Now, a lot of my colleagues in the American Nuclear Society want this to be buried, want this spent fuel to be buried. They say that uranium is very cheap and available, but guess what? Now we have our war with Ukraine and the Russians have shut down all our supply of it. Granted, a bunch of it comes from Canada, but only 5% of it comes from the United States. And we haven't uh, we haven't really been in the business of enriching uranium now for 30 years because it's it's been just replacing reactor fuel that we have now. So we're only we're only enriching a very little bit of what we could have and reactors are shutting down for no reason at all, no safety reason, no economical reason, nothing. And so we really, as American people, want to think of where we want to be. And we need, really need to take a little bit more uh, notice of, of how much of our economy our government is trying to take over for itself. 
That's the thing that bothers me the most. If we let free enterprise go, of course, we have to regulate it. I'm not saying there's no need for a government. There is a need for a government. We are a, a country of laws, and we need the laws, and we need the stability. But we don't need them mucking around in business because they're not very good at it. No, so, uh, no. Well, it, that's, it, that's the risk of the public-private partnerships. And the public-private partnerships ring a little bit too close to what Germany was doing in the 30s and 40s, if you get my drift. That was yeah. the premise of that. Well, stuff. we got to watch that for sure. And we don't want big business colluding with big government. Otherwise, we have a big mess like we had in, in Nazi Germany. That's exactly and, where we're going today. And we're running there just as fast as we can. And it's not going to well, be... Well, there's nobody in our government stopping it. And there's nobody in big business stopping it. So guess who's left, right? Yeah, well, so we have the power, no matter what they want to try to convince us, we do have the power. So we can demand this kind of thing. We we can throw them all out and hire new ones if we want. We just need to get the resolve to do it. But this idea has a lot of good things in it. There's a lot of profit for private business. $10 trillion is, you may not realize it, that's $30,000 per person in the United States. So that's a lot of chunk of change to most people. Okay, so when you put it in context with our national debt, everybody's got to write a check for $100,000 each per person. You got four people in your family, write one for $400,000. So far in debt we are now. $32 so trillion. On a gold mine of, uh, I guess, at least $10 trillion if we use it. We may not use it all, but there's a lot of mistakes we can make in there and still come out. But we already have the technology, not in the laboratory and, and actual companies, that are developing and trying to get a license. So all we have to do is get the government out of the way and we can do it. And there's, it's hard to convey this to people because they can come home and flip their light switch on anytime they want to. And the lights come on and that's, that's hard to convince them that there's any kind of danger. So maybe they want to wait till all the power goes out for a month and see, see if they want to try to start fixing it there. But maybe it is a long-term solution. Everything you're coming up with is a long-term solution. So if you if you throw that in the toilet because you don't like long-term solutions, when are you going to start all over again? And so I, I favor a very, very smooth transition from fossil fuels to, to nuclear. And that's what we're going to be doing. It's just a matter of uh, how long we take to do it and how much we fight ourselves in doing it. Because the bottom line is wind and solar is not viable in the commercial market. There's not a single utility that would buy commercial uh, wind or solar without subsidies. And if they didn't get zero energy credits and they didn't have the, the whole business propped up, none of them would be in the business. And so here we have a very viable way. Nuclear power has been working now for uh, almost seven decades in the United States. Right now we produce a little under 20% of our electricity each year with nuclear power. Even though they, we had a peak of 104 reactors, now we're down to 92. They keep closing reactors way before their uh, rated time. It's like throwing away your car with a five-year warranty at two and a half years. Nobody would do that, but but the federal government. So why why are we doing all this? You have to ask yourself as citizens, is that spending money to your best benefit? So I'm convinced we will go uh, with nuclear power because as history shows, we go through times of madness and times of sanity and times of madness and time of sanity. And so we have the infrastructure all set up for it now. We just have to now get back to the to the leadership that could do it. And, and there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, reason to do it. Like I said, we have everything you want. You have lots of money for people who want lots of money. You have e um, environmentally sound power for those who want environmentally sound power, and you have cheap prices for those who want cheap prices. And I don't know if I can see, think of anybody that's not in one of those three groups. Yeah, well, let, let, let me back up a little bit. So a lot of a lot of people just scared of nuclear point blank. The problem is nuclear is we've not taken a good systematic approach for setting it up, and it's been hodgepodge. And so, uh, and, and when we looked at safety in nuclear power plants, we looked just at the power plant itself, and we ruled out a lot of uh, events such as the hundred-year flood or what happens to the dam upstream, just a lot of stuff like that wasn't taken into context. What happens if the entire grid in the nation goes out from an MPE or a CME? 
So what we're talking about here in short is a combination of technologies of nuclear fuel recycling and part of that being the uh, molten salt reactor, which I've covered. I had a guy talk that in a previous video, so I can uh, link to that video. There's also the uh, this idea of the small module reactor, which would be uh, a consumer for this fuel, one possible consumer for this fuel. And what I like about those is, uh, so what we're getting here is we're getting a shorter conductor. Uh, if you're on a microgrid and you're not connected in to the national grid, there's several benefits. One, you don't need that big high power transformer that can be fried by an EMP that takes 18 months to replace. And I've talked about that a lot on this network. So if you get that out of the equation, if you're not as worried about the spent fuel uh, nuclear rods because of two things, one, you're reprocessing, excuse me, you're recycling that fuel. So it's going to be going down. And two, you're going to have that uh, small modular nuclear reactor to provide the backup power that can't as adequately be done from diesel generators like we currently do it because the diesel generators have to have fuel and uh, operating infrastructure to keep them refueled. So if you lose all that, that small modular reactor can keep churning and it provides more power anyway. So if you combine the nuclear fuel recycling with small modular reactors, you can get rid of a lot of the problems and make nuclear power safe because then you got the backup power for that plant, to, for the plant, for the, for the spent fuel rod pools, and you're getting rid of the hazard that exists currently on spent fuel rod pools because you're re, you are recycling it. And that's good. Recycling is always a good thing. So uh, we're, we're kill, we can take care of multiple birds one stone. Technologically, as you pointed out, the technology is there. The, most of the infrastructure is there. It's a matter of political willpower. Yeah, it's a, it's a little more than political willpower because really there's too much political willpower. Uh, yeah. So they've they've been they've been guiding the uh, the actually the biz the course of natural business they've been guiding with their subsidies and it's it's uh, there's a probably easily been five trillion dollars in subsidies to wind and solar and I you know it's hard to mention trillion dollars to people but again that's fifteen trillion or uh, fifteen thousand dollars per person in the United States now if the government came trotted up an idea to you uh 20 years ago and said look why don't you guys just send us fifteen thousand dollars per person in your family and everywhere and we can set you up with these renewables, wind and solar. I don't think they get a single dime. But nope, now that they do it all on their own and borrow the money from our children, now it seems to be okay idea to these people. And I don't understand that at all, why people will let them be taken advantage of like that. But they, they have been, and they then and they are. People don't see it, that's why, because we don't we don't really see the national debt yet because the wheels haven't yet fallen off the train. But when the interest on the debt gets higher, then the uh, revenue from taxes on an annual basis, then there is no way this goes forward. The train will crash and will probably crash before then. So the, the real crux of the problem here, as you mentioned, is when the companies and the government get into these partnerships, these uh, so-called, and then they sell it like it's a benefit. The government's all we can save so much money, we can accomplish this by these private uh, government partnerships. But the problem with that is, oh yeah, for the big companies, they lobby for this and they push for it because they get a guaranteed market with no competitor. They get in, they're going to get the government money. They're going to have money no matter what. They don't have to be competitive. They don't have to live the market forces. This is not a free market. This is not capitalism. It's corporatism. And this is the way it's working all over this country. Also, a lot of your regulator uh, and regulatee groups that uh, have revolving doors between them. So a lot of these big government agencies, uh, they're, they're switching boards of directors and employees with uh, the uh, organizations are supposed to regulate and they get a very incestuous, protect their own turf and heck with everybody else attitude there. So there's some changes that need to be made in these areas, but uh, this private public partnership is a, it's a really bad thing. It's really, really bad. And the government's running down that road and it does nothing for us as citizens, as uh, it does nothing for the environment. It does nothing to save us money. It costs us money. It's inefficient. And it's a tra it's it's an abhorrent traversity. Well, I'm okay with government watching out for safety and watching out for uh, regulations that make sense and and keeping people playing on a, on a fair playing field. But right now, we have far more regulations on nuclear. It's been 70 years, and uh, you I can make a case that for a commercial nuclear power plant, 
And under normal operating conditions throughout the world, there's nobody been hurt in 70 years. Now, you can't make that statement for any other industry that I know of. And so I don't know what people are listening to that's causing them to be so afraid, but they are. They're, they're somehow afraid of this. But at one point, you got to say, hey, wait a second. You know, we've had this for seven decades now, producing 20% of our electricity for very affordable costs, and yet they want me to be upset with it. And I, w I wish somebody would come along and explain to me why they are based on history. I mean, you don't have airplanes advertising that, well, yeah, well, some of our airplanes crashed. Uh, yeah, but not really many people died compared to how many flew on airplanes. They're not advertising that. You don't have car companies that go, yeah, 40,000 people a year die in cars every year. But you know what? That's really not that much if you are if you really wanted to use a car and, and put it to, to use. Well, we can go out there and say nobody's died uh, in a normal operation. Chernobyl was not a normal operation. And nobody died from TMI. Nobody died from Fukushima. So nobody's died from commercial reactor operations anywhere in the world. And that's tens of thousands of, of reactor years that, that this has been cranking up safe property. Doesn't use any land. You, you can put them all on the existing reactor sites now. But I mean, uh, small mod reactors, these guys can put them in their basements. You've even had some casinos in 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 vegas starting to ask about them but where can i get them that's their question the answer is well <laughs> they're not in the market yet so um that that's the conundrum right now and we got to work our way through it so yeah i'm okay with the government being looking out for our safety to a certain degree and you don't want safety to be to be the enemy of quality of life i mean we can all hide in our basement with our water, our guns, and our food, and sit down until something bad happens. But that's not life, really. So there's a medium there where we have to take it. And this nuclear power is that medium. It really, really goes a long way to solve our, our energy issues. Steve, I'm not anti-safety. I've been working in the safety community for 20 years now, but <laughs> avionic system safety and rockets and things like that. So, but the uh, thing is, and I don't have anything against safety. What I got a problem with is when you get an incestuous relationship revolving doors between the regulator and the regulatees, I think that needs to be cut uh, because that leads to an unhealthy relationship. And it exists uh, more than any other place between NERC and FERC within the uh, electric power industry. They, they're, they're a special inbred case of that. But in any event, it's not uh, directly nuclear power, but... Uh, Still, we, we need to cut some of those ties and, 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 and not allow that to be current at the rate it's occurring. But, but what I was really raining against was this uh, private-public partnership, which excludes the real market forces. Now, what you've told me and, and what you told us on our uh, teleconference Friday was that uh, turn the private industry loose. And uh, if they were turned loose, they could go in and capitalize on this and start reprocessing this fuel because it's worth a fortune. Well, that's true. And, and if you look at the market forces that I'm talking about, uh, again, there is onerous regulation and government resistance to, to nuclear power plants. I don't care what they tell you, how much they're subsidizing them. If they subsidize single digit billions for nuclear, that sounds really good. But if they're doing double digit billions for coal power and, and, and natural gas power and trillions in in wind and solar, that's not that's way skewed in as far as business manipulation is concerned, and you should be concerned about that. The government has no business out there telling you, the American people, what kind of stuff you should be buying. And amen, and if, amen, and, amen. And, amen. And, then, and then these companies can compete with each other instead of hiding under this umbrella of government monopoly and pro charging whatever they want to, because you know as well as I do that you. Utilities will raise their rates whenever the heck they want to, and they can and they're putting in solar panels because they get a production credit, they get a um um um, um uh, uh, consumption credit, they can sell zero energy credits to Massachusetts from Minnesota if they want to. So they create this whole underground uh, free money uh, frenzy, and all they got to do is put them up. Well, they're running into other problems now. The offshore wind people. Have, have about tripled their price in it. And utilities are not going to take one piece of risk in it. So that's why they're running into trouble. 
They got to go back to the trough and get trillions of more dollars. Well, our government can stop that overnight. They don't have to keep pumping the trillions of dollars into the business and, and skewing the business. But then I guess where would they get their campaign contributions? There you well, go. Again, that's not benefiting we the people. We the people need to say that. And I'm I'm going to start saying it. And I'm and I'm and I've got an idea now that we can all sign on to. The environmentalists will love it. The safety people will love it. The people will love it. And the capitalist entrepreneurs will love it. But imagine all this one reactor took half a billion dollars and 10 years just to get to permission to go ahead and, and put their design into force. And then they have to get permission to build it again. Where would our building industry be if we had that? Where would our car industry be if we had that? It'd be nowhere. And so you got to think about what you as a consumer want and, and where you want to go forward. And, and uh, my ambition is to get in front of a governor somewhere. That's what I really would like to do. So if any of you know governors, I would fly out tomorrow to talk to one because the deal makes too much sense to them. Not a single state will consent to accept used nuclear fuel into their state. And guess what? All of the spent fuel in the United States exists in a state somewhere. Yep. Some states don't have any, some states have a lot. So uh, why they're fighting this uh, uh, consent to accept used nuclear fuel at almost twice its weight in gold is something I believe they just don't understand the basics of. So when I get to a governor, there exists in Congress, some say 45 billion, some say 50 billion, but let's say 45 billion of a, of a fund that they've collected from all the ratepayers. This wasn't money they printed out of thin air or tax people out of. They charged directly to ratepayers with nuclear power plants from 1983 to 2014 and stuffed this in a lockbox that they have uh, in, in, in their congressional budget. And it's uh, it, it gains interest every year because it's in T-bills. So it's, it gets about a billion or $2 billion in interest every year, maybe more now if the interest rates are going up. And so let's say it's $45 billion. We can solve this problem using private enterprise with $45 billion. All we need to do is get uh, a couple first-of-a-kind reactors. So once we're over the first-of-a-kind building hump, then they can crank them out in in factories. Just hey, like Steve, Harry let's Ford. Go back to that. Steve, let's go back to that. You made that point Friday. The fact, the fact of the matter is that there is a fund out there that was established to take care of and uh, dispense with actually bury or whatever, take care of this, these, all these spent fuel uh, rods. And it's just out there accumulating money because there's not been a plan. Oh, yeah. By the way, Nevada was real happy for us to build the facility, for us to spend billions and billions of dollars. But the moment we got it fit, they, they, they let us put every little less wire, touch of paint on it. But just a second after we got it finished and spent as much money in building stuff, you can't put anything here. Holy smoke. What a what a scam they pulled on us. But as you mentioned, it would be worth it to them to take it. Oh, yeah, we want it. <laughs> it would well, be I lived there for 38 years and I was on the side of you ought to take it because they're never going to bury it for all that time. But I was, as you might imagine, a way in a minority in that process. But I still I still tried to convince them. I still tried to, to talk them to doing the right thing for Nevadans, but they didn't. And there, I could talk for hours on this, I won't, but there's, we could have a whole series of, of episodes on Yucca Mountain because I lived through all of it as, as, a, as, as an interested citizen. I can tell you all kinds of anomalies. There exists no facility out there now. So they spent something on the order of $15 billion out there to study rocks. This rock that's out there is the best, most studied rock in the, in the universe. And, and they have dozens and dozens and piles. And I don't know, you can't imagine how many pages of, of information they have bought and paid for on this rock out there. All they have constructed is a two-mile hole. They dug a two-mile hole with a tunnel boring machine. What the idea was to go down after that. But by the time Obama stopped it at Harry Reid's request in 2010, and that you talk about some horse trade, and there's some horse trading going on there, that they finally, finally killed it not by legal methods. The law is still on the books. They never bothered to change the law, but they killed it with financial methods. They just didn't fund it anymore. So technically, it's still a law that's waiting to be enforced. Now, until they come up with a better idea, that money sits there because nobody has a better idea for it now. 
Nobody knows where they're going to bury it because nobody else wants it. They have an idea to put two interim storage facilities, one in New Mexico, one in Texas, and both of them are fighting it just as hard as Nevada fought the repository. Why well, wish I could talk to those governors? Because they're insane to turn this material down. But they're afraid, rightfully so, that if they get a 40-year temporary interim facility and the government doesn't come up with a permanent facility, then that it's not going to move out of their state. So that they're just worried about getting lied to like Nevada got. got you know, like they, they lied to the people by taking all this money that they could find a solution. They haven't found a solution. And and I don't think uh, I don't think New Mexico and Texas uh, uh, trust them anymore and throw them either. So they're not letting that interim facility proceed, even though NRC has approved the design to go forward. NRC, like a rocket, approved the the uh, there's there's a new fuel that Gates's fast reactor uh, uh, needs. It's called HALU, high assay, low enriched uranium that we don't make and Russia won't give us anymore or won't sell us anymore. So we got to find a way to make that in our country. And so we have to have this accelerated process to get it going. Well, the approval of NRC was almost overnight for that facility. Remember, New Scale had to wait seven to 10 years to get theirs. Overnight, they approved this uh, um, enriching facility for, hey, look, guess what? Bill Gates needs it. So there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of weird stuff going on. It doesn't match science and 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 fair regulation that that you got to really question, but the but the point is no state will uh, consent to accept it. The first state that consents to accept it can tap into this uh, fund for a solution. All they need is a solution. They don't have to implement the solution. They have to just come up with a solution. Now the government wants to charge these reactor comp uh, the utility companies again for once they have a solution to charge them back again this money and get this money flowing back into the coffers. The truth is they don't need that money to make this solution if they turn it over to private enterprise. They can't, this public-private partnership you mentioned can't happen because they have to just give the money to the private enterprises to solve the problem. That's what they have to do. And when it gets done, uh, it, 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 they, they'll do it very much cheaper than people think today because there's a profit incentive for them to do it. And there's a huge incentive for the governor who decides that they'll consent to accept this used nuclear fuel if they promise to recycle this in fast reactors. And that's something that a governor could declare today. And you talk about states' rights and tromping all over all of our individual rights, that could turn that, that could turn this whole issue over, over overnight because the federal government has shown they cannot do it. I don't think they've uh, to my mind, and I wish somebody would correct me. I can't think of anything the government undertook uh, since they came back from the moon in 69 that really has been successful. I haven't seen any of it. I it hasn't been transmitted even into private enterprise in any meaningful way. So let's go back to what works. That's what I'm saying. And here is a concept that it's, it's almost a no brainer. All they have to do is get out of the way. It should be simple. And so I, that's why I can't, I wish people would uh, debate me on this and, and bring these issues up to me, but I haven't found anybody who wants to yet. They want to just make statements and no, that stuff's all too, too unsafe and walk away. And, and so that's what we're up against. Steve, let, let's, uh, let, let's formulate some concrete actions. What do you think could be done right now to start moving the ball down this road? One would be get to a governor. What, what could be done at the federal level? What could, if people wanted to contact their Congress creditors and say, hey, you need to do something, what would you tell them to tell them? First of all, I wouldn't spend, waste my time on the federal government. We've gotten way too dependent on the federal government to do all this stuff for us. I want to get in touch with the governor. And the, uh, the, the plan for a governor to come up with this idea, and it would work because there's no other solution for it, and they're not even, they're only talking about a solution now. They're not even... They haven't even planned to get a solution. So the um, the what I tell a governor, as I said, first of all, the stuff's worth ten trillion dollars at one cent a kilowatt hour. You want this in your state, okay? It's very, very safely maintained now. And despite what people think, uh, the Navy transports this stuff on the road all the time, one hundred percent safely. So all these things that they're worried about might happen. 
uh, has already been going on for six or seven decades with, with a high degree of safety. Nobody's been hurt. So all these safety issues go out the window when you look at the history of safety, which is what we should be looking at. So, hey, Governor, you agree you consent to accept use nuclear fuel. No other state has consented that. In return, you get a national lab that is um, uh, uh, optimized for tech transfer. We have 19 national labs that, that do all basic research and very, very little of it gets to private enterprise. Well, if you had a national laboratory that was optimized for taking all that technology and moving it out into the private enterprise, uh, that'd be a huge boost for our economy. Really, really highly uh, beneficial to future endeavors because companies don't want to do basic research. They like the basic research should be done in the national labs, but there's not, there's a trickle that's coming out that's getting back out into the, the private enterprise. And then you design an a, a, a industrial park for clean energy and you co-locate that with the national laboratory. You get a program management office to set this all up for the governor and that would have to be privately funded, which I mean, I think you, I think you could do it for 10, million over a couple of years, but everybody's telling me if you had lawyers and lobbyists and all that other stuff, you need about 40 million. Well, that's <laughs> jump change to some of these people in this country, right? right. They find 40 million in the in the in the couch covers. Three so of it goes to once the governor said I'll consent to accept this under these conditions, there should be no problem finding investors. And while you're asking, you might as well keep asking, right? You want to ask for microgrid research. You want to ask for national grid research. You want to ask for 100 million a year for your universities to develop nuclear engineering programs and for your community college to, to develop technology programs because nobody in the country uh, makes more money than the technical operators of nuclear power plants. That's the highest paid job of any technician in the country right now. And so those jobs are highly prized and you'd have a really, you could have an instant middle class with just technicians. I mean, high middle class. Those guys are making 100, 120,000 a year because they're so highly skilled. And so you don't need all engineers and, 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 and scientists and everything. You need a lot of operators. So let's get that going. Let's get that education part going. So the microgrid research, the, the, uh, the national grid research, and, the, and the, you want the military applied engineering and technology, okay? So once they get these reactor going, you want to bring them to your state to make sure they work. And then there, you want your state's uh, military to have the first ones, okay? And they're going. The military side of this is going. They've down-selected the three companies. They've paid two of them uh, something like $20, $25 million each to develop a prototype of these reactors, even though there's no license for any of these yet. But I'm sure if the Department of Defense wants to get one, I bet the license happens pretty quick. So they're they're down that road. They've picked the first base for it, and they're ready to get to get these in, installed on military bases because they're afraid of the national grid failing. They want an on uh, the, the wind and solar is not not doing anything for them as far as strategic power on all the time. So they want a small modular reactor to power their base. So they're going to make what they call islands of power or or microgrids on their bases, and those are going to happen first. And maybe that'll pull the rest of us into it. But if we had one governor and one state that wanted to really rattle rattle the chains and, and, and get some control back in the states, he'd do it, but it has to be privately run. It has to be run by private indus industry through a privately funded organization. You can use all the money you want from the federal government that comes through to pay for it, but you can't let the federal government or the state government run it. It has to be run by private enterprise based on a private enterprise system. And if you levelize this playing field in this country for power uh, with uh, no subsidies and equal regulations to the level of safety for everything, nuclear blows everybody else off the map. And I think that's what they're afraid of. Nuclear power is so uh, all-encompassingly smart and, 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 and economical and safe that they're worried about that happening. Well, they shouldn't be worried, Greg, because this will happen over generations. It'll happen over a couple generations. And we're not gonna lay off all these people in coal plants tomorrow. In fact, that's the idea of Gates going to, uh, to Wyoming is they wanna put this where a coal plant is and keep these people employed. Well, like you said, well, 
We'll not only put them on, on nuclear power plants, we'll start putting them on coal plant uh, arenas. So the people over two generations, I mean, your grandkids, you're not worried about what your grandkids are going to be doing when they grow up yet. You know, you're worried about what you're doing when you grow up yet. So as this transition slowly, it's not going to disrupt any of these uh, uh, rice bowls we have now. But they're, they're, I think they're really afraid of losing control through the government on this stuff. But we got to really, really force it. This, this plan could do it. The, a governor would endorse this plan. It would do it. And I could show them how. And uh, I really am not looking for a career. I just want to make this happen. I like a multi-pronged attach. Yeah, we've, uh, I've got listeners from many states. Maybe some of those will go talk to their governors. Uh, small states, you know, have less population per government rate, governor ratio. When I was in Alaska, I could actually talk to the governor, <laughs> and I did. <laughs> so uh, the whole lot, you know, so so many small states, you know, the, the 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 heads of state are a whole lot easier to get to. Same thing is true. Some of your, I got a, a brother-in-law who's in direct contact with the president of Kenya. So uh, <laughs> uh, so when you're a, a country that's got a smaller population or a uh, state's got a smaller population. Uh, it's a lot easier to get a hold of the elected officials. Yes. So those states might be a good target for some of this. So Any state could do it. It doesn't take a special state or a special rock formation or next to water or anything. Any state could do this. Any state can do it. Yeah. So, further, yeah, furthermore, uh, but as a multi prong attach, I'd like to, to, you know, take it from the governor's standpoint, but I'd also like to be able to get a hold of the federal government and say, stop doing this or stop doing that. Uh, don't, don't give subsidies over here or do more of this. Uh, you know, but they're not listening to the people anymore. So that's the trouble. People have got to throw these guys out. They're not listening. These people in, in, in DC now are not listening to the people. And, and I don't know how you'd ever engineer that, but they really do have to, you know, change out the dirty laundry is my opinion, but, um, that'll all come in due course as, as things get worse under this regime, it'll start getting better. It always does. It, it gets worse to a point where people can't stand it anymore. And it starts getting better. But this is an idea a governor could implement now. This is the idea people could get behind right now. And it 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 doesn't matter whether I'm the guy doing it or somebody else, but it it can't it can't get bogged down in either state, local, or federal government operations. It has to be run by private enterprise on a competitive basis. And it could it could it could change the face of 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 our grandkids' energy. Well, not my grandkids, but my grandkids' grandkids energy posture in 50, 60 years. And I, I'll just say it right out. We're going to have fossil fuels for 50 or 60 years. I see no way to keep power on in the current situation. There's not enough money in the treasury and not enough money that they can borrow from our grandkids even to, to actually implement a 100% wind solar operation like they want to do. They want hydrogen now and and that's fine, but it doesn't pencil out economically uh, compared to other energies either. So the way you socialize new ideas is you start introducing them into the market and see what works and see what doesn't. And maybe if they want to beneficially uh, cost out clean energy, fine, but beneficially cost out all clean energy. Don't pick a certain, a certain sector and support it. So if you want to have the safety, make safety regulations that apply to everybody equally. If you want to have environmental restrictions, have them standards that apply to everybody equally. So um, that's the that's the place that we have to be in. And I'm, I'm saying there's not, there's I don't want to do away with all the government. That's not what I'm saying. I think there's a place for, uh, for government, but but only by doing what is good for we the people, not by convincing the people what they're doing is good for them. And this is the plan that could do it. Like I said, it has trillions of dollars of profit embedded into it. It's already there. It has um, environmental written all over it. We don't have to take 100,000 acres swaths of land to get a gigawatt reactor going. It could fit on existing land we already have. And, and, we, and, and uh, it, it actually benefits the people, the consumer, and move. it has a huge power to move competition into the into the electricity retail market. So we're gonna fight, it's gonna be a lot of fight on this because people are gonna to try to stop it. Because to be viable, there's people that are gonna to wanna to keep the way things are because that's where their, 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 their investments and their wealth base is. But America moves along and proceeds, 
and some, you know, some companies go out of business. A buggy whip uh, business had to suffer because the cars came along. I mean, it's all that stuff happens. And this has happened in energy too. But over two generations, if you transition it, it's not going to put anybody out of work. It's not going to ruin anybody's fortune. But it will if we keep taking fifteen thousand dollars per person in the United States to 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 to, to maneuver a market. It just doesn't make sense to me. Well, the ten trillion dollar uh, gold mine, even the solar companies could buy into it and transition that way. So anybody so. can make money at this. Anybody can make money. I don't care who you are, where you are. if you take it on and get a piece of it. So uh, to to be so locked into one mindset is stupid you know that's not even good free enterprise it's not good capitalism just to get your mind locked around one thing only when there's other opportunities why you want to dip, why you want to ignore an opportunity that's better than the the, the one you're sitting on so that's that's the power of, of, of free competition a lot of people have lost sight of that and their kids today have been taught that socialism and big government's the answer to everything and the only thing it's an answer to is poverty because nothing works as efficiently anyway all right, I think we've done enough damage to this. I do have a, okay. I do have a website, the Freedom Restoration Foundation. It's got an action center page where you can go through and con contact your various Congress critters, raise some cane with them, and they need it. And I have had uh, effectivity doing that when I was chairman of the policy committee of the National Space Society. I've had huge effectivity in changing national space policy on a number of matters. So I do believe it can be done, but you just got to work it. And then you got to, and one, you know, you got to work as a collective voice when you can. But we were small organizations doing this. And we've had some huge changes. So uh, that, that's why I was asking what could be done at the other level. So we'll look at this more down the road. But what okay. you, but to, just to recapitulate for everybody to get the essence of what was said here. One, first and foremost, there's a way to make this work. It, right now, it, we're not there. But uh, if you take, and recycle the spent fuel at the nuclear power plants. Not only are you getting rid of a hazard, you create a huge economic opportunity to give us energy for up to 250 years just from that stuff alone. And if you combine that with the small modular reactors at the nuclear power plants, you've increased the safety for backup power. So you, you've, and by having the small modular reactors, you've reduced the uh, uh, conductor sizes needed to uh, power whatever local uh, consumer there is. Uh, the E3 waveform, the solar coronal mass ejection puts out, which will get us eventually, sooner or later, uh, it, it's picked up by long conductors, long power lines, rail lines, and pipelines. It, a, a regional or a small local grid is not going to be as susceptible to it, nor are you going to need those high-powered transformers that are at huge risk from those things being fried. And it takes 18 months to get them on your loading dock after you order them if you have the infrastructure to order it with. So... Now, the whole way we're set up today, it, it creates a lot of risk, but this risk can be taken care of in a very profitable manner, but we've got to shake the tree to, to wake people up and also to kind of knock out some of the nepotism that exists in it today. Well, that's family oriented, but it's almost the same with some of these industries and the government, the way they have intertwined themselves together. So we need to, uh, we need to shake this tree. We need to change things and we need to be proactive about it. This can be done. Again, if anybody knows a governor that you can get in the ear of, this might be a good time to start talking with them. But share this video with other people because you might just share it with somebody who can make a difference. So share this video wide, send it to your friends or acquaintances, put it on social media. Somebody that, that, that might can take this to a governor might see it. So um, anyway, Steve, I appreciate it. And uh, we'll, we'll have to pick this up later and, and delve in some more. You've got PowerPoint presentations and a lot of angles on this we could talk about in the future. So I want to thank you for coming here and for being on my show today. And I want to thank everybody for watching. Just remember, share this stuff. Get it out there. Subscribe to my channel. Bang the other notification bell and click all. And uh, check out some of my links below to help my channel. You know, I've got various uh, affiliate marketing links. Like if you're worried about the economy and the, the trials that check out defy the grid <laughs> with where you can buy gold backs it's not gold back currency it actually is gold have you, have you seen these steve they're bills that's one thousandth detroit <laughs> you can put it in your wallet and, and it's it's already in a form that's uh, it cost me three bucks and some chains to buy this i could go buy a loaf of bread with it i can't do that with gold bar but this is not gold back it is gold <laughs> <laughs>
I love it. <laughs> hey, Steve, thank you for all you've done and what you're doing. You bet you, Greg, and uh, anybody can contact me anytime. You can get to, to me through Greg if you need to. And I'm happy to talk about it. I'm especially happy to talk about anybody who has any idea why this couldn't work or why it shouldn't work or what's bad about it. I'd love to debate somebody like that and talk to them. You I haven't had anybody tell me why, except political rice bowls, why this wouldn't work. So, yeah. You want your email or some link to, to be listed in the show notes where people can see it? I don't have, well, I can give my link if you want it right now. I don't have it up there. Just email it to me. Email it to me. You can put it up there if you want to. Yeah, uh, sure. Okay. All right, folks. Thank you all for watching. With that, I'm going to say, Greg out. Thanks, Greg. Thank you.